400 miles, 8 hours on a coach and a trip down to London, but if all things go right today, we're top of the league. Yes, today is massive. Hull City take on Queen's Park Rangers in the 7th round of the EFL Championship. Two teams with playoffs in sight, two teams with amazing loan players and two teams who have unfortunately been ripped apart by Aguero in the past. But today should be very interesting. With the Tigers having a very exciting weekend following a 3-2 win to Coventry and three goals is a hat-trick by leading top goal scorer in the championship, Oscar Estupinian. And for QPR, they ended their winless run against promotion-seeking Watford. Both sides are raring to go and full of confidence ahead of the 7.45pm kickoff. As always, here's all the information you need to know about today's game. Today, we will look at the host, Queen's Park Rangers. Founded in West London, Queen's Park Rangers, better known as QPR, currently sit 11th in the Championship, following a winless five games and a narrow win against promotion-seeking side Watford. QPR have made a few good loan signings this summer, including Lair from Manchester United, who will look to impress the scouts. Today will be a massive chance for QPR to carry on their winning home run. Now, we move on to the history between the two clubs. Now, believe it or not, it's actually very close this time. They played each other on 55 occasions, with the Tigers winning 19 times, QPR winning 18 times, and respectively, 18 games that ended in a draw. The last competitive game ended in a 1-1 draw, with goals by Chair and Marcus Fors made sure both teams came home with something. Fun fact, that was actually Marcus's fourth, first and only goal for Hull City. I'm afraid he only played 11 games and it didn't really work out for him. Now he's at Middlesbrough, good luck Marcus. Today we travel just under 400 miles and over 8 hours on the coach to the Loftus Road Stadium, which is another stadium I'm able to complete out of the 92. This takes our season total up to 982 miles. Now, that's enough from me in front of the match-worn shirt wall at my home. I'll see you once we get down to London. As me and Adjun says, what the time is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're in London, we're at Loftus Road, and we're back in the boys in black and amber. Now, it's just under an hour till kickoff, so the lineup has been announced, and we will get to that shortly. Firstly, let's talk about the, uh, the coach journey there took us about six hours. We hit rush hour in London, and I'm guessing it hasn't been the best for a lot of City fans coming down here. But free coach travel. I forgot to mention that in the intro. Adjun, what a legend, has given us coach travel. But I think it's time to move on to lineups. But before that, here's a quick score prediction from all the lads in Tiger travel. Up the Tigers. We're on the coach. What's your score prediction? I reckon it's going to be 1 0 City, Oscar S. Tupinan. Ooh. Come I'm, on, the I'm Tigers. 2 1 to the City, Oscar S. 3 0 City. He's, he's, he's gone. 2 0 City, Colombian's finest. We're going to lose 5 0. <laughs> 2 1. Come on, you City. 1 0. And of course, here's the lineup for the Tigers. Now there is some shocks here. Jacob Greaves, captain. Coyle miss out. And here it is. In goal, Matt Ingram. The two wing backs are Callum Elder and making his debut for Hull City, Cyrus Christie. The three centre-backs, Captain Jacob Greaves, Alfie Jones and Tobias Figueredo. The three in centre-mids, Andy Cannon, Regan Slater and Ryan Longman. And the two up front, the usual two, the man who scored a hat-trick, Oscar S. Stupinian and of course, Benjamin Tete. Here's the view from the ground. I must say it's a nice ground. I think it was about 17,000 QPR hold. And uh, I'm not sure how many they fill. I haven't seen it, but uh, it's a very nice ground. It's very compact and uh, very close to the away fans there and there. The Tigers are out, but I'd say the most interesting thing is this man in the corner with his Moroccan flag, his trumpet and his nice hat. The players are walking onto the pitch now. Orange sky, orange wind. Hopefully a good night tonight. There's no other recoil, but we'll get into that after the game. It's all City to take kick off. And it's Andy Cannon. The atmosphere is electric as always. I hope you can hear me. And we're on the way straight to Jacob Breeze. 50 grand, 50 grand, you can say 50 grand.
I don't believe it. It's 1-0 QPR. Well, you know that. You saw the goal. Been shambolic defending so far, but it's only the opening 10 minutes. It was a lovely strike, and I think it was. It was chair again. He scored last week, last year when we played him, and he scored again. And we're back on. It's 12 minutes in, and we're 1-0 down. Probably being the worst defensive performance in the first 12 minutes I've seen. We're always quite good in the second half. As they say, we're a second half team. So hopefully, if we get a goal before the first half ends, second half we can push on. We'll have to wait and see. And it's another counter attack. Oh! That goal music! Oh. It's a shame though, because we're playing good football. It is a big shame we are playing good football today. 15 minutes in and we're 2 0 down. And Regan Slate has lost the ball again and Lyndon Dykes is on it. It's a shame now, I think we've dropped our heads. If it goes to 3 or 4 0, then who knows what could happen. We don't want another Wigan on repeat, I'll tell you now. The only positive I can take out of this game is how nice that goalkeeper kit looks. I don't think you can see it on camera, but that is one gorgeous kit. Go on, Benjamin! In, and surprisingly, despite being 2 0 down, we're actually playing good football. It's actually quite promising. It's just in the defensive third, we always lose the ball, and that's where we conceded. Two sloppy mistakes at the back, there's two goals conceded. Third Callum Elder corner I've filmed, and both of them nothing's happened with. Yeah, nothing happened. Well, Andy! 35 minutes, well, it's actually 37, but uh, I was recording a free kick, which nothing happened for. Hold on. It was nearly 3-0 then. It's been appalling. But we have had a few shots since then. Any other game it could have been 2-2, maybe 3-2, but we don't take our chances, we don't score goals. And just as I finish recording. I just I'm in shock. We go from one game beating you know the top six sides thinking we're gonna go full into confidence and then we lose to West Brom we win the next game against Coventry we think wow Oscar Shubin is gonna score another hat trick here we're gonna win three or four nil at the beginning I said we could be top of the league and then we go and it's not even half time yet and it's three nil 40 second minute and I'm telling you now I'm very looking forward to my burger nice coke because I think that'll be more interesting than the game just making the m mistakes everywhere. It's just been shocking. 45th minute and there's three minutes added time. I don't think they'll score in this three minutes, but you never know. I'll see you for an half-time briefing, which I must say. Oh, hang on. Oh, well, we lost the ball. I'll see you at half-time. Half-time and it's 3-0 to QPR. It's just, it's just not been our day. It always happens. We always have a good run of form. We always, we always get thinking, you know what? We might get a win today. And then we end up getting absolutely hammered. Defensively, we've been very, very poor. I mean, I am recording them all, but Callum Elder, Tobias Figueroa, all of them, very shaky in defence. I mean, a few of them have played well and strung a few good passes, but whenever we see them playing from the back, I'm just thinking, it could be four, it could be five, and you have a mini heart attack. And especially when they slip, I don't know whether it's it's a pitch or it's Tobias Figueroa's boots, but one of them needs replacing. Hopefully, a well-deserved team talk, and hopefully a very good team talk at our time by Shotter Avalanche. I'm always going to keep faith in Shotter. He's a lovely guy and a very good manager. I don't care what they say. He's an amazing manager, and he's going to sort the team out. And hopefully, a better second half. Well, I'll see you then. The Tigers have come back on the pitch, and there is a substitution for Old City. Ryan Woods is coming on, and coming off is Ryan Longman. I thought Ryan played all right this half. He gave it everything and showed some passion. And it's QPR to take kickoff. Joe Willett to take through. Look at the scoreboard. There we go. 
it's my 50 cent minute brief thing. And apart from that absolutely shambolic open goal miss by Lyndon Dykes, there's not really been much of the second half. It's been, it's been woeful. I mean, there was a point where I thought, you know what, we might get another one. I mean, there's a few opportunities. And it is another substitution for all City. And uh, if you can hear the fans behind me, they're not impressed with Cyrus. And it is a substitution. And I think it is Cyrus Christie coming on. The football we're playing today, despite losing 3-0, we're actually playing really good football. It's the minute now, and we're actually playing good football for once. Despite losing 3-0, we're playing a bit like Barcelona. Maybe when they were against Bayern Munich, we are still playing quite well, ticky-tacky football. It's just a shame the end product is nowhere near good enough. It's weird that. It is weird. So it's the 72nd minute. And it is a third substitution for the Tigers. Coming on the pitch is Tyler Smith. And coming off the pitch, which I hope is not Oscar, is Andy Cannon. Well played, Andy. 80th minute. And the let's pretend we scored a goal chant has come out, which shows how dismal we've been today. We know what we're like defending free kicks. We've got very tall players in the wall. Hey. Tyler Smith is through. Go on, Tyler. Yes! yes! Come on! We've got a goal, ladies and gentlemen. And it's Tyler Smith. It's it through the keeper's legs. It was a lovely finish. And I'm pretty sure my hand was in the way. So you didn't see it. But I can describe it to you. It was a lovely lofty ball by Regan Slater. Right over the defence, Tyler Smith on side, right through the goalkeeper's legs. And I'm telling you now, we're going to win 4-3. <laughs> we're on the attack again, I don't believe it. It's strange this. We might actually get another goal back. Since that goal's gone in, it's rocky. We scored a goal. It's worth the five-hour drive. And we've got to throw in. There's always a chance. Playing all right, surprisingly. That's a handball. Surely, surely that's a handball. 90th minute, and safe to say we did enjoy the goal. We did have some celebrations on our trip down to London, which is going to be a lovely way out. Um, but yeah, I think it's confirmed that we won't score again. Actually, oh, oh, oh. oh. it's a corner. And uh, it was a great shot by Benjamin Tetsu. So uh, there's four minutes added time, but we've already played one. So uh, yeah, that's about it. He didn't have a right day out. Still not finished. Still got five hours back in a four o'clock pick up from Hull, which will be lovely. But uh, yeah, I'll see you at full time. And then I'll see you after the game for a lovely report. And that's it. It's full time and the music comes on. QPR win 3-1 and it's a well-deserved victory. I can't fault QPR, they played well, they deserve the three goals. It's just not our game today. It's really upsetting and we should have taken more from it. I'll see you at full time for the full time report. Now it's a four hour drive back to London. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. After five and a half gruelling hours, we're finally back at home. 3-1 to uh, QPR and uh, probably one of the worst defensive performances I've seen for a while now. But to take one positive out the game, we scored and it was a fantastic goal by Tyler Smith through the legs of Dieng. Lovely volley. We knew going into it that we were favourites to win. We thought, you know what, we've gone through a right run of form. We've just beat Coventry, Oscar Stupinian, top goal scorer in the Championship. And I think it's a perfectly fair result on how we played. I think QPR played absolutely amazing. I think their fans were for them, kept going, kept backing them on. I think we were amazing as always. We were rocking after that last goal. I know, uh, I know the uh, let's pretend we scored a goal chant was used a few times, which isn't nice to hear. I think there's a few things we needed to learn from that game. And I think it's a well-deserved lesson. First of all, we should never pass it round the back. If we stop playing it round the back and we stop making risky passes, like every time Tobias Figueredo passed the ball today, I thought it was going to slip and I nearly had a mini heart attack when he did slip. 
I think someone needs to check on his football boots to make sure the studs are in the right place. I think today really showed how much we are missing our injured players. And I know I'm not making excuses for the team. It was an appalling performance. But, you know, if we had Mike Aseri, Ozan Tufan, Ali Arsai Manesh, who all worked their socks off, I think it'd be a completely different story. But on a good news, Demetrius Pelkas was in the building and uh, he's left. He's gone back to Turkey after that performance. Uh, I've just spotted him on the M1. He's not happy. And all jokes aside, he is now a Tiger. He spotted having some uh, a photo with a kid. And that's what you like to see. We like to see the players interacting with the fans. Now, as I said, it was a very long journey and it is now four o'clock in the morning. So with all due respect, I'm going to keep this outro short. I know I never plan these out and they're all a bit of a mess. I know the intros are more, you know, planned and skilled, but it's not like I can write them in advance. So uh, again, if you have enjoyed this, and uh, I say it every week, and you know it does help me. Can you please like, subscribe, and if you really want to see my videos, turn on the notification bell and I will pop up on your phone screen. How lovely is that, me with your wallpaper? Anyway, I think the next game is a big game. The Yorkshire Derby, Sheffield United at home. I think the MKM is going to be rocking. Apparently, 17,000 seats have already been sold. The top tier is being opened. It's going to be bouncing. The North Stand's already been sold out. And that North Stand really does bring the atmosphere. The North Stand helps keep this team alive. And that's what we love to see. Hopefully, it will be a good result. I mean, Sheffield United are fly high, top of the league so far. Just battered Reading as well today. Uh, 4-0 I think it was and they were top of the league so it is going to be a very scary fixture but if we can get back on the right foot I think Ozan could be back potentially Mike Aseri I know Louis Coyle for certain will be back hopefully with the new players Demetrius Pelkas and the ones returning from injury we can get something out I would be so happy with a draw I usually don't like draws but a draw against Sheffield United would probably make my weekend and even if we push for a win I know we can do it I know we have it in there it's just if we perform and not play it around the back but that's enough from me waffling at my home I'll see you for Sheffield United at home up the Tigers